Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and I was always told out of voice of radio. So today, it's probably only fair that we go and do a top 10 rundown of Explosive Walker. You see, ladies and gentlemen, we were supposed to do this a little while ago, but Rebel Clash came out and the rotation was announced, and we, um, well... I'll be honest with you, it got pushed back a little bit, but it stopped being put back now. So let's start off with a very quick couple of honourable mentions. Lookalike Bell is a very, very nice new item card which is coming out. It lets you search your deck for any Pokemon with the same name as a Pokemon in your discard pile. Really nice card, but it's a little bit awkward to use, given that you have to have the right Pokemon in your discard pile before you can actually play this but potentially good as a mid to late game option or in expanded with battle compressor, but then you are playing four and discarding one to search more out easily. It gets a little bit awkward. Wishy Washy is a card I'm legitimately quite a big fan of. If you want a Pokemon using Shuffle Draw, this is phenomenal. The 30 HP is horrendous, but one colorless energy, shuffle your hand into your deck and draw eight cards. Yeah, fine, your opponent's definitely going to try and drop a Marnie on you straight away. But if you want a Pokemon to use Shuffle Draw and give you a new hand, this is probably your best option. Pokemon Breeders Training is a new supporter card. That is very nice, but again, moderately awkward. It lets you choose two Pokemon and search your deck for a Pokemon that evolves from each of them and then evolve them. Problem is, you need to have one turn to get your basics out and then your second turn you're playing this. And it, it means you're playing quite a slow strategy. Doesn't mean it won't work, but I do have my reservations. And finally, Heat Fire Energy, my last honourable mention. It's a special Fire Energy that gives you an extra 20 HP. And on the one hand, I think this is awesome. And on the other hand, I don't know if anyone's really going to play it. Because it doesn't combo with Welder. And it can't be searched out with Giant Half. And it can't be recovered with Fire Crystal, etc, etc, etc. I don't think it's like Speed Energy where you're going to play four of them because that draws you two cards when you attach it. I think it's a nice card that we'll see play in some decks, but I think it's going to be a fringe card even amongst Fire decks, Boo, Hiss, etc. So moving over then into the top 10 proper, we've got Graplocked V. Now, this is one of those that has a huge amount of potential and could end up being phenomenal or could end up being just never played. Now, the free energy, 120 damage, 220 on a coin flip, is not terrible, especially with a card we're going to see later. But the main selling point here is single energy, 20 damage, but if the defending Pokemon is a basic, it can't attack during your opponent's next turn. And when you look around the format at the moment, seeing things like Zacian and Picarom and Mew Mew, there's so many basic Pokemon that are really seeing a huge amount of play around at the moment. The problem with Graplock very simply is, firstly, the energy acceleration for the second attack is not that easy to pull off. And secondly, it is the defending Pokemon which means your opponent can just switch. It doesn't give Graplock protection from any basic Pokemon. It gives Graplock protection from the defending basic Pokemon. So your opponent can just switch out of it. And I do think that makes it quite a bit worse. In at number 9, we've got a single prize Pokemon. And there are not many of them on this list. Sorry. We've got Golisopod. Now, free energy, 70 damage, switch with one of your bench is fine. The fact that we've got twin energy to help pay this attack cost is okay. But it's just a little bit meh. Free energy on a hit and run attack I'm not loving. What I am loving is the first attack, two energy, 30 damage base, plus 50 more for each Pokemon V or Pokemon GX your opponent has in play. Well, if your opponent's got 4GX or V in play, you're doing 230 damage. Oh, look, that's enough to KO a Zacian. And the reality is that if your opponent sees you playing Golisopod, remember that when this comes out, we're going to be very close to Ditto rotating, so the element of surprise is going to be much more difficult to pull off, which really sucks, because with Ditto 
and twin energy to pay the attack cost, this would be a phenomenal surprise Pokemon, Boo Hiss, etc. This would actually be a really good Pokemon. As it is, you're losing the element of surprise. What's going to happen more often than not is your opponent is going to choose not to play down that extra Pokemon. But then we're back into the situation where your opponent is choosing not to play Pokemon they want to play to try and hurt you. And I am totally okay with that. It's a non-GX, non-V Pokemon that can hit good damage for a single attachment. Sign me up, quite frankly. Coming in at number 8, we've got Galarian Stunfisk V. Now, Galarian Stunfisk V is one of these Pokemon that I could see being an absolute powerhouse, or I could see it being a very occasionally played rogue deck. It really could go either way. It's got an ability that gives it an extra 20 HP for every metal energy attached to it. Bearing in mind we've got stuff like Metal Saucer that will really help. Though we are saying goodbye to Solgaleo Prism Star, which makes me very sad. Good at accelerating energy. And then for two energy, you do 60 damage. But if any of your opponent's Pokemon attack this Galarian Stunfisk during your opponent's next turn, you put 12 damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. Yeah, I'm totally alright with that. You see, 60 damage for 2 energy isn't great, but bearing in mind, you're hopefully going to have 3, maybe even 400 HP here. So your opponent is very unlikely to get a 1-hit KO on you, and then you're essentially doing 180 for 2 energy, and you've got a bunch of healing you can play around with as well. And this is the opposite to what we said with Graplocked a moment ago. This is getting protection or hurting Pokemon attacking you. And that means that if your opponent switches, they still take the damage. They've got to play Gusting to get around it. And I know that Boss's Orders is out now, and that is really good Gusting, and that will really help. But they're not going to be able to play Boss's Orders every turn for the entire game. I suppose maybe with Power Pad they literally could. But it's very unlikely. And then they're going to end up falling into the trap. And trapping is basically Galarian Stunfisk's thing. Coming in at number 7, we've got Gardevoir V and Gardevoir V Max. And this really does just carry on the theme of what has been really this set for me. Which is, there is potential there, but I don't know how good it's going to be. Now let's get one thing out the way. Yes, I know it's weak to Zacian V. Just like you know it's weak to Zacian V. The thing is, you're not always going to play against Zacian V. And this does not have to be the only card in your deck. So yes, it's got a terrible, terrible, terrible weakness. No one's pretending it doesn't. But you can play a deck which is Gardevoir. Oh no, wait, but I've got this Pokemon instead for if I'm playing against Zassi and V. There we go. So with that out of the way, Gardevoir does have a lot of potential as a healing kind of deck. As long as you're not getting one hit KO'd every turn. Gardevoir V comes along for free energy, 120 damage. But if you heal this turn, you do 200, which for free energy is pretty good. And the V Max of free energy does 180 and heals 50. We've got that new Suspicious Can card, which is coming out, which heals 80 if you discard a Psychic Energy from one of your Pokemon. There's a new Milotic in this set that heals 20 damage from each of your Pokemon during your turn. Or you can just use that in DDV that came out in Sword and Shield, if you so wish. And then you've either got a Pokemon hitting 200 for free energy, which is good, or having 320 HP while healing a lot every turn, which is good. But make sure you play it with something that can stand up to Zacian, would ya? Now this is where I think we draw a line in the sand. I think the top six are quite a bit above the four we've talked about so far. In at number 6, we've got Big Parasol. Now, Big Parasol is a new Pokemon tool card. And what it does is it prevents all effects of attacks other than damage done to the Pokemon it is attached to. So, something like Rampardos coming along, trying to get an automatic one-hit KO. Nope. Something like Torkoal V coming along, trying to discard a bunch of energy. Nope. Something like Pincurchin coming along, trying to get Paralysis. Nope. 
special conditions, automatic KOs, energy removal, anything coming from an attack other than damage is prevented by Big Parasol. And to be honest with you here, Big Parasol is going to be one of those cards whereby it doesn't see play in everything, but there are going to be certain matchups that you're really worried about, and you play this just to stop that. And that's kind of awesome. In at number five, we've got Kabu. And I am perfectly aware that at the moment, I am rating Kabu higher than a bunch of other people. And I'm totally okay with that. What you do is you shuffle your hand into your deck and draw four cards. But if you've only got one Pokemon in play, if your active Pokemon is your only Pokemon, you draw eight cards instead. And drawing eight cards is a very, very good thing indeed. So, yeah. Now, of course, it's not always going to work. If you draw this turn one going second, where you're allowed to play a supporter, and you don't have any other Pokemon in hand, clearly this will be phenomenal. But there's going to be plenty of times it doesn't really work to give you more than four cards. But then again, Chorus was only really good when both players had a large bench, and Chorus works brilliantly. Then again, we play Chorus and Expanded with Versus Seeker. And when we played it in Standard, we had Versus Seeker, which we don't have at the moment. But then again, we do have Eldegoss, which will get it back quite nicely. And we do have Mewtwo from Unbroken Bonds. And then Oranguru. Mewtwo puts it on top of your deck. And Oranguru swaps any card in your hand for the top card of your deck. You can see where we're going with this one. So actually, we do have ways to play it just as a one-off and then recover it and have it in our hand when we need it. And I think that's probably the way we're going to end up playing it. But I think for that, it's really good. The other thing to remember is, to the rotation, we're losing Cynthia. We're losing Lily. We're losing Tate and Liza. We're going to need some options here in terms of draw supporters. And this is a decent option in terms of draw supporter. In at number four, we've got Center Scorch V and Center Scorch V Max. For my money, the best V Max in the set and definitely my favorite of them. Now, Center Scorch V is fine. I don't think it's phenomenal. It's fine. One fire energy, 20 damage, and you may discard an energy from Center Scorch and then an energy from your opponent's active. But then bear in mind, you've got Welder to Accelerate Energy, and you may well be taking off a super valuable special energy, whereas you're just losing a regular fire energy. That's something to bear in mind. Four energy, 180 is fine. But then you get to the V-Max, and the V-Max here is nuts. Two colorless energy, but let's face it, one Welder. And you do 40 damage base, plus 40 more for each fire energy attached to this Pokemon, but when you attack, you may attach a fire energy from your discard pile to this Pokemon. So turn one, you essentially weld a two fire energy onto it. And that's assuming you didn't already have any fire and it's a VMAX, so you probably did. There's 120 damage. Then, of course, you attack and you add a third energy on. Then you welder and you've got five energy on, which is six times 40. Five energy plus a 40 base. That's 240 damage. The second time you attack with it. And that's assuming you had no energy on beforehand. The fact that you've got Welder. The fact that it accelerates energy to itself. It, this could get out of hand very, very quickly. Plus, you know, it's hitting weakness on Zacian. And they're not going to have Metal Frying Pan anymore. They will have Weakness Guard energy. Gee whiz. If only you had an attack that could get rid of their Weakness Guard energy. Or, you know, an attack that could KO them even if you're not hitting for weakness. I am psyched about Center Scorch. Coming in at number two, we've got Glimwood Tangle. Glimwood Tangle comes in this high because it is going to see play in a bazillion different decks before it rotates out. We basically see just a reprint of Victini here, but as a stadium. So when you flip coins for your attack, if you don't get the coin flips you want, flip again. Although it is all or nothing. I mentioned that pin curtain earlier. Now I did a video about it. I'll link it in the description. I go through the maths there. But it basically turns pin curtain to a 90% chance of paralysis. That's the one flip four coins, 30 for each heads. Paralysis if at least two of them are heads. 
any attack from now until Glimwood Tangle rotates that wants a coin flip, you're going to have to be thinking Glimwood Tangle. Because all of a sudden, you've got a second chance to do it. This is going to be big. In at number two, we've got Viker Volt V. Now, Viker Volt V is one of these, and I'm sure a lot of people would have put number one in this particular list. And I wouldn't be terribly upset at you if you did, to be honest with you. It's an exceptionally good card. It's the new Seismitoad. Viker Volt for one lightning, one colorless energy, does 50 damage. And during your opponent's next turn, they are not allowed to play any item cards from their hand. It sounds a lot like Seismitoad. And let's face it right, Seismitoad did take over the format for quite a while. Now, Seismitoad did have double colorless energy. That was awesome. It also meant if you picked it up with something like Super Scoop Up, you could then play it down again with double colorless energy. And Vikavolt's got tricks. Vikavolt's got Thunder Mountain for a short period of time pre-rotation, where you can then just attach an energy. And even post-rotation, you've got Tapu Koko Prison Star that will attach one energy to each of two Vikavolt, essentially making them single prize Pokemon. But the problem is that you're still not in a position where you can just drop a single energy attachment and be rolling. I think it's a very, very strong card. I think it's going to see a lot of play. I think it's going to see a fair amount of success. I have made a video about whether it's going to be the new Seismitoad. I'll try and remember to link it in the description. But what I can tell you right now is it's definitely a very good card. Item lock is extremely strong. Oh yeah, and it does actually have a really nice attack as well that does 190 while discarding two energy. No, it's not an every turn thing because of the whole discarding energy, but make no mistake about it, it's going to be extremely useful just in terms of, well, doing a big attack when item lock starts running out. I think there's a lot to like about Vikavolt. And like I say, if you put this number one on this list, I'm not going to be terribly upset. It's not for me. For me, it's firmly entrenched at number two. But just to be clear, right, number two still makes it a phenomenal card. But number one, I'm putting Mad Party. And I feel quite good about this. Again, Mad Party is a... I mean, it's not really one card. It's a series, but you cannot split them up. I'm higher on this than most people, and I'm totally okay with this. Now, Poltergeist is your main dude here, and for two colorless energy, remember twin energy, it does 20 damage for each Pokemon with Mad Party in your discard pile. Well, gee whiz, that sounds kind of familiar and also kind of good. But it's also got an ability, once during your turn, you may discard a Pokemon from your hand that has Mad Party. Oh. Yes. Oh, and then you draw two cards. Sorry, that's actually really important. You also draw two cards. So it's easier to get the Pokemon in your discard pile, and you've got a built-in draw engine as well. That's kind of ridiculous. And we've actually got four options for Mad Party. We've got Mr. Rhyme, who is your token evolution, where you don't play the basic, you just play it as an evolution to discard. We've got Dedene, who, again, you just play to discard because the attack costs a Psychic and a Double Colorless. We don't like it. And then you've got Bunnelby, who is your backup attacker, because, again, Double Colorless Energy, Mad Party. Though 40 HP is even lower than Guy 60. But then again, that does mean you can use Professor Round's Lecture to search out the majority of this deck, and that's actually really cool. Yes, it's just a new version of Lost March, or Night March. But then again, you've got more Pokemon that you can use than you did with Night March. And when you compare it to Lost March, it's much easier to get the Pokemon in the discard pile than it is to get them in the Lost Zone. So actually, I like it better than either of those two decks. I cannot sit here right now and tell you it's definitely going to be a tier 1 deck. Maybe the low HP is going to be too much or too little, depending how you want to phrase it. Maybe it's not actually going to work and be fast enough. I don't know. But I do feel pretty good that it's going to be good. And for that reason, I'm saying that this group of cards is the best card. I know I'm cheating a little bit in the set. But you know what? I'd like to know what you think about this. I'd like to know your favorite cards from Explosive Walker. 
So go nuts in the comment section, but be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. And please do make sure you're checking out youtube.com slash plays, where you can find out about a whole bunch of games that don't have Pokemon in, but are pretty gosh darn awesome nonetheless. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.